Normality has been returned on Salty Lass. We are sailing. <sighs> it's been a crazy week. But I'm looking forward uh, to seeing new horizons and uh, it was things. quite it was quite crazy about half an hour ago with that big um, cruise ship. Oh yeah, it was the closest I've got to any big boat. <laughs> we were right over on the other side, and the uh, the pilot boat was still giving us evil. Hang on, I did wave the. I did wave the radio at him and uh, one on 16 and one on 12, but nobody said anything to us, so we just carried on. If it said, stop where you are, come back around in circles, we'd have done that, but we didn't get anything, did we? And uh, we did contact um, them a couple of occasions on uh, Channel 12, and uh, they just didn't want to know. Where is in Belfast and, and Lock and Liverpool? In Liverpool, they sent the pilot boat out after us once because we didn't talk to them. Yeah, they <laughs> expect you, even as um, uh, yachts, as private vessels, as yeah. private vessels, they expect you to contact them. But here, uh, yeah. we contacted them, and, they and said, don't do that again, please. Don't do that again. So it was like, okay, fair enough. But uh, the kettle's going on. So, like I say, normality is. The really bad bit of news is there's only one clean cup left in the boat. Uh. So that's a cup of tea for me then. <laughs> we'll just have to share. Hey, tea delivery. In the skipper's tea cup holder. <laughs> Oh dear, I'll put the sunglasses over here. Yeah, I need it for the sea sparkle. Yeah, you do, don't you? Well, we decided not to come out yesterday because uh, we regarded the weather as a bit sporting. And I think really that the sport has caught up with us and this swell has been generated from yesterday's weather. But as you can see, it's a bay um metre and a half sort of swells. Um, the boat's going through it okay, it's just not particularly pleasant sailing. I, I certainly feel like I need to be here because, um, don't get me wrong, our autopilot does an absolutely fantastic job. Well, you're not holding the wheel at the minute. No, our autopilot is doing the job, but uh, there's just a lot to keep an eye on and if you need to, then I'm in the position so that I can just get on with it, really. But on the good news front, uh, there's a red buoy up ahead which is um, guarding some rocks. Once we're clear of that, we can shift our course and these waves, instead of coming on directly on the beam, will be coming more from the quarter and we'll be running before some of this wind. And that'll take some of the bite out of it and hopefully we'll have a slightly more relaxed sail. Because whatever else you say about this, relaxing it ain't. No, it's not relaxing. Um, we have had a competition though, um, yes, on the worst buoy of the week. Oh Lord, that's ah. buoy boy, not, not, not sort of the male of the species. But um, no, I mean, we're under a, a IALA number one uh, type A buoy each year. And uh, so we have, theoretically, ring cones and <laughs> And sand. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll talk about the voyage later. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Whoa. Where the hell did these come from? Right. <laughs> I feel safe enough now. Well, 
Well, what a difference a few degrees make. <laughs> Honest to goodness. Um, we've now turned to a course of 225. What that means is that uh, we're now on a training run uh, with the wind behind us. And because um, we're taking going downwind, we're taking the bite out of the wind. Also, um, the swell is behind us and is taking us down. We are going to arrive at our destination a bit earlier than we ex anticipated, but that's only because we're going faster than we anticipated. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, we've still got swell. Um, and we're still having to keep an eye on the boom. Yeah, I had estimated the course at about four and a half to five knots and we're doing nearly six. Yeah, so we're about 20% quicker than I had anticipated. But uh, t having, the, having the wind on the uh, back quarter and having the waves on the back quarter uh, has really calmed the boat down and made for much... Oh my lord, did you see him away over there? Oh. Yeah, there's a, there's, he's, a, there's he's, a motor launch going that way and like he, he's practically half out of the water, it's crazy. It's because he's going very close in um, and he's taking the waves uh, bang on his uh, nose. Mm. Uh, I'll see if I can get a few pictures of him. Mm. Yeah. But um, anyway, back to our interrupted talk on Voyage. I forgot what we were saying about that. We were just saying about the fact that we had a, a particularly poor boy uh, in that um, it was very can shaped but it was actually a cone and the only thing that they had on the thing for a cone yeah. was a little tiny triangle about that big on a, on a, on, on a can that was like two meters tall yeah but um, it was a very solid can but um, from a distance like a mile away you can see this beautiful can that looks black as it's outlined against the black sky you can't see the triangle on top so mm -hmm. you think that's a can, it must be red. Where's the green? And you're looking all right, and there's an extra red you can't find on the chart, and there's a green that's missing. And then you get up close to it, and you find that there's a two meter cylinder with something about the size of a pudding bowl on top that's triangular. Yeah. The other thing we don't like about some boys are lattice boys. Whoa. They are very difficult to see. So a little bit of swell. Yeah. But um, yeah, lattice boys. Anyway, tell you what, we'll have this convo a bit later as well. <laughs> We've got a bit further, but... Back to sailing. Well, well, we underestimated the angle we needed for our jive, didn't we? Yes, uh, we're currently on an angle of 225 and I thought, oh, 260 um, is where we want to go, that should be enough. It turned out to be more than 270. We needed about 275, uh, really, um, to so, keep, make the angle, the jibe work. So, we're so we're basically I need a, a, a jibe angle of about 50 degrees. Something like that, yeah, so we're going to stay on this course for a bit longer and then we'll jibe in. Yeah. Uh, about another 15-20 minutes probably do the job. Well, I can keep an eye on it and track it, but um, yeah, I just needed more than I thought. <laughs> you always need more than you think. <laughs> I know, but what the heck, we did a few drive practices, no problem. Oh, more pop boys. Yes, I've seen them. The curse is back. Yes. There's been many a time you've heard us bang on about having binoculars and them being what we consider to be a crucial um, component of equipment that you need to have aboard. And today they've proved it yet again to us. Um, we have a piece of land over there which looks quite low and flat. We thought to ourselves, that's it, conceal must be there. And then we saw a yacht magically appear from a cliff out of nowhere. And we thought, how did it do that? And then we had a look and there's a cardinal just outside conceal. We took these and we found the cardinal. Now these have a compass in them, and so we looked down the bearing from the chart and we saw the South Cardinal and we saw the headland that the yacht had come out from behind. It's a perfect blend. You cannot tell from here that Conceal is in there. Uh, conceal might be a better name for it because it's very, very well concealed. But without the binoculars, we would have sailed straight past it. So 
once again, another vote for 7x50 binoculars. If you can get a pair with a compass in them, go for it. If you can't, just get a good pair with a lovely crisp clear image. Because we now have found the entrance to where we want to go and we nearly sailed past it. But without these, we would have sailed past it. And that's just no fun at all. Why do we deserve a cup of tea this morning, Bev? Oh, action and drama here on Salty Lass. Um, the sun has barely risen and um, we've had a bit of excitement. We've dragged our anchor, which is the first time this year we've dragged it. First time for quite a long time we've dragged it. And we find out why. When we pulled it up, um, there was an old rope tied around the anchor. There's clearly some foul stuff on the bottom here. And um, also our anchor ball had um, wrapped itself around the anchor and we think the anchor we think the tripping line tripped the anchor out uh, because it was very, very badly tripped and twisted and all sorts of nonsense. What we think the main cause is, is this river has a very strong tidal flow in it. And it's a bit like the Menai Strait in, in one respect, in as much as we've had times where the tide's going that way and the wind's going that way and the boat honestly doesn't know which way to face. And we've chased around here in circles time after time. And I think, to be honest, what we've done as we're going around in a spiral, gradually wrapping the anchor chain around the anchor. Um, just the anchor ball, basically. The anchor ball hasn't helped, but the chain was actually wrapped around the anchor as well. That's true. You know, but also, it was very, very twisted. I had sections where it was like 34 twists, twists in it. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and when you look at the uh, chart and you look at our track on our, on our anchor um, drag alarm, you can see that we've just been going round and round and round, and it looks like a knotted ball of string. And to be honest, that's pretty much what we pulled up, a knotted ball of chain with a bit of string thrown in and an old rope tied around the shank of the anchor. So, don't know what's going on down there in the bottom. Anyway, there's no way we could sort it out with these winds and tides in here, so we secured it with a snubber line to make sure it wouldn't drop off and hit the boat. And then we um, came across to a mooring and uh, took a mooring. And um, so we're on a mooring today, so uh, we'll have spending a night on the mooring tonight. Uh, we've sorted the anchor out, we've got it all untangled and done. It's time for breakfast. So, something of a relaxing morning now, isn't it? Well, we're now past, past our coffee and uh, we've had a snoozle. But uh, the wind is howling outside. Um, it's going to be getting on to high 20s today. 31 you said to me. Oh, slow 30s then. Okie dokie. Well, it's going to be getting that kind of uh, thing, uh, speed, and tomorrow's going to be pretty much the same. But um, I'm fairly happy where I am. Um, I certainly do not feel like going and uh, putting the anchor down, although thankfully it is now all sorted out and the anchor is now back. So, um, and we have uh, dropped the anchor in this kind of weather before, so we, have. <laughs> but, so we can do it. But we'll, we'll continue to use the mirroring ball because it has proved very useful, hasn't it? Uh, we couldn't have sorted out the um, chain um, while we were motoring because it needed the two of us to sort it out. Um, because it was just so tangled. And also to bring the anchor, it was much easier to bring the anchor onto the deck um and you needed the two of us for that as well so we couldn't have we couldn't have um on the mooring ball we're secured we're safe whereas um one person on the motor and the other person trying to sort all that out no not really 
Um, I like having two people. I think it is so useful just having that extra ha pair of hands. And I really, really do... <sighs> admire those sailors, sailor, sailors. But for me, it's just not going to work. And a little side note, and I'm not advocating for tiny anchors here, but it's quite clear that if you have an anchor that's too big for you to lift by yourself, mm. you could be in real trouble. Uh, yes. An I anchor, could. whatever size you get, you've got to be able to manoeuvre the darn thing by hand if required. Yeah, we can. Uh, I mean, say I can lift our anchor on my own, but it was just easier. Uh, having two people uh, to handle everything. True, but if we went for the uh, get the mega anchor sort of school of yachting, I, I wouldn't have been it. Wouldn't be able to uh, lift it. The other thing, though, uh, was even though the anchor, the chain had got wrapped round the anchor, the um, foul moorings that we picked up, of, of which we only picked up part of, got wrapped round the anchor. We still, when we were dragging, because everything had got wrapped around it, we still weren't going very fast because it was still on the ground. Everything was on the gr on the ground, and that's a lot of weight to try and drag around. Yeah, and the anchor is actually the smallest part of the weight. Yes, the chain is um, by far and away the largest part. Um, Obviously, if you don't put, you know, you only put five metres, then I would say that the anchor is heavier, but we never do, so... Um, if we put ten metres of chain out, the chain weighs more than the anchor. Yeah, and I don't think we've ever... Put as little as ten metres out. Put as little as ten metres out. To be honest, it's very rare we put less than 20 out. Exactly, so, you know, that weight means that you don't... Dra although yes we were dragging because we were going backwards we'd moved 50 meters we had and that was um well without outside of the uh zone um but it has to be said having the anchor drag we could look at it as i say we never worried so much about anchor drag because you can look at the chart and you can see where everything is but in this case we had a big not shall we say of where we'd been but then we've got this line outside of the knot so you were clearly had dragged whereas sometimes it can just be that you're outside of the zone but it's a day for staying in yeah but i've got loads to do i'm going to go and do some work in a minute um so that's what i'm going to be doing today i'm just gonna lie around like a big slob well, you do that on your side of the fence, but I'm working on this side.